Okay, we're going to make the bear paw block. And on that, I have cut two rectangles, one from my background and one from my bear paw fabric. And they measure 11 by 6. We're going to draw the grid on the back one, uh, the background. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we also need on the bear paw fabric, you're going to cut a strip that is three and three quarters wide and you're going to cut four three and three quarter squares and then you're going to take what the remaining fabric and cut one square that is two and three quarters big then on your background you're going to cut a strip that's five and three eighths and you're going to cut four rectangles from that two and three quarters inch wide and then you're going to cut four squares from the remaining fabric that are two and one eighths inch wide so you'll start off with all of that and then we'll start marking our background square here so start off with i lay down my ruler if you have you're going to set your grid it's going to be four squares by two and so if you add the two and a half inches, you're going to be drawing your grid at two and a half inches for each square on here. And this measures six. If you have two and a half and two and a half, that's going to be five. So you can drop it down a little bit here so that you don't have to be all the way up at the top, but leave you some room for your cutting line. So I drew my first line on there, and then I'm going to slide my ruler up and line it up with the two and a half inch line and then I'm going to draw my next line going all the way across and then I'll slide it down and you can either line it up up here at the top on that first line at, at the five inch mark or the second line at the two and a half inch mark whichever is going to make you know easier for you to do but line it up and then you'll draw your final your final line on that after you do that, then you're going to turn it on the side and you're going to have um, a little bit of extra left over. So you've got about the same amount on the side. So you can be in about a half inch or so. Draw your first line and then you're going to slide it in and at every two and a half inches from that you're going to be drawing another line. So just line it up and also kind of watch registration lines where you drew those others so that you're keeping it all straight on your ruler. So use those markings to help you. I'm marking mine with a friction pen and I'm using two different colors. I've got a blue and a red. <clears throat> you can use pencil, um, just something that uh, if you use a washout just before you go press anything you're going to have to get it wet to take it out or else it's going to be permanent. But you're marking your cutting lines in one color, and I'm going to be marking my cutting lines in the blue, and I'm going to mark my stitching lines in the red. So, Okay, I've got all my cutting lines marked, and now I'm going to go mark all of my stitching lines a quarter inch away on each side of those, and I'm using a different color so that I'll be able to see that whenever I'm stitching and you don't get so confused. Okay, I've got all my lines marked, and I'm going to go sew on all the red lines. I'll just start marking, you know, just work it around, flip it, and just sew on all of the red lines. And to help keep it from sliding around, I put a couple of pins in there. And you want to make sure whenever you put the pins in that you place them so they're not going to be in your stitching lines. And that way it'll help hold it so that it'll be um, easier for you to stitch this. Okay, I stitched it all and I've cut it apart and you'll just take everything else here away and like I was saying on some of these, here's one, you'll get the little uh, extra threads there on the end. Just pull those apart. They should come out fairly easy and that way you can open up your half square triangles and then press it. When you press it, it's going to get rid of all the friction marks and pin, mark pins. And just press your half square triangle. So you've got uh, 16 here. 
and the formula anytime you need to do this method your booklet had how to do the grid method in it so it tells you how to calculate what size you need a piece of fabric how many squares you have to have and what size you're going to be marking on this and how to go about doing that so anytime you need to do it in the future you can do it it's great pressure seams to the dark to the dark and then I also trimmed off the dog ears this finish is pretty much right at the two and the eighth it might be a little bit shy of that so I didn't square it up I only cut off the dog ears the next step you're going to do is you're going to lay them out you're going to have four going like that two stacks of four with the dark on the bottom right hand corner and then you're going to have two stacks of four with the dark on the left hand corner we're going to sew all of these together like that just flip it and they'll be stitched together and then you're going to stitch these two together just flip it over sew the seam there so you'll have two stacks then and that's going to be for the different size of the um, the paws okay they're all stitched and pressed you press them to the dark so when you're laying it on the back to know which side that is it's going to be the one that has the most of the dark and it's up at the top so press your seams to the dark and then we're going to lay out the block when I chained piece these I did one stack here and then I broke my thread and then I stacked the I did the others that way I would keep them um, a separate so I wouldn't get confused by which direction that the um, the little colored spots for the triangles were pointing and we're going to lay out the um, bear paw portion of the un of the block so I've got all four of my squares that are in three quarters and then I've got my small two and an eighth inch background squares here so I'm going to lay those like that and then what we stitched while ago I'm going to lay down on the left side and then the, the other ones are up on the top so just watch your orientation on these half square triangles according to your diagram lay your block out the way it is on your um, instruction sheet and then you're going to sew these two together and you're going to sew those together press your seam to the solid pieces that don't have any um, stitching on them and then we'll sew these two to, to that when you're sewing if you have one piece that's going to be a little bit larger because I told you that some of these were going to be um, real close to the actual size that you needed put the larger piece on the bottom as you feed it in and that way it will go and it will uh, help to ease that in and so to make sure that I've got it right, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to flip it so I don't get it mixed up. Since I want that one on the bottom, I'm going to have to turn it around and stitch it that way. But just watch your orientation on those squares so that you have them laid out right and just hold it together. But as you stitch this in, it'll help to gather up any of that little extra because this was maybe just a tad bit small. All right, now these two units are stitched. You're going to be attaching this one to that one. And notice I, I said to press to the um, solid piece of fabric. So your seams are going to be opposing so that you can nest those in to each other. So you would want to match that seam whenever you do that. When I match seams, I usually put a pin there to help hold it so I know that I get it. And then we'll stitch that, and then we'll do the final layout of the block. One thing I also wanted to point out is when you were stitching these, when I when you work on this bigger piece, it makes an X there on the back. So that's going to be another one that you're going to have to watch to make sure that you hit, hit those X's. Anytime you see an X, you want to try to hit it so that you'll have nice sharp points come up at your intersections. Okay, I've got that all stitched and I pressed my seam down to the main um, square there. So now we're going to lay out for the final portion of the block. You've got your corner there, one down here, the strip in the middle, your square, a strip, 
a strip, a strip, and then lay your bare paws around. All of the paws are going to be, uh, the claws are going to be pointing out. Whoops, there. So we've got our block laid out, and when you're going to stitch this, you're going to stitch that, whoops, I had that turned the wrong way. You're going to stitch that piece to here, and you're just going to work in rows like we did on the other one. Stitch that, then the, the last uh, row there, and then you'll go stitch your rows together. You'll stitch your rows together. And when you do that, you're going to come over here and you need to match the seams that are here. When you're sewing those two rows, anytime you have a seam that's going to intersect, you need to match that. You're going to be pressing your seams to the light fabric on this. And that way everything will be going in the opposite directions. Okay, there's the completed bear paw block. Mine wound up being about an eighth of an inch shy um, all the way around. Pressed my seams to the lights so that I could lock them all in. And when you're sewing um, these on, that middle strip, you're hitting some X's around here. So just watch for your X's and uh, get those all to where you can hit that X and get a nice sharp point on the front side so you have nice little claws.